Thank you, Steve and Juliana. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming in today. An important topic that we're talking about today, um, talking about sleep studies and sleep disorders. So what are some of the common warning signs that indicate a person has a sleep disorder? Yes, of course. So there are many signs. Um, uh, for example, when you sleep enough and you, after sleeping seven, eight hours and you're still tired, if you wake up with headaches, um, if your mood is changing, that can be an indicator that you have a sleep disorder. Sometimes that can also lead to depression and anxiety as well. There are some other signs that are more like physical too. Uh, snoring, for mm -hmm. example, those are signs that can be noticed by your family members when you're like loud snoring, choking, gasping sounds when you sleep. Uh, if you wake up to go to the bathroom several times uh, throughout the night, that could be an indicator of a sleep disorder too. If you are having uh, with performance, like you know, at work, having issues concentrating, if it's hard for you to find your words, all that can be signs of sleep disorders. Okay, yeah, I did not know. I did not know any of that. That is good to know. Yeah. And how can people differentiate between occasional poor sleep and a more serious issue that requires medical attention? Yeah, so we all have gone through those spaces where we cannot sleep well, and mm -hmm. it's usually because of life stressors, life changes, or other medical conditions. Uh, but if they don't resolve in like two, three weeks, four weeks, and you're still having the same symptoms, that's when you need to really, it's a good idea to see a sleep physician. Again, if you're having issues like performing at work, it, that's some of the signs, but if you're having like hands tremor, that could be signs of sleep deprivation too, or involuntary eye movements, that could be something else too, so yeah. Okay, so some things to look out for. Mm -hmm. And who are the individuals most at risk for developing sleep disorders? Um, well, to be honest, we are all at risk, mm -hmm. all ages, all genders, but usually um, there are some, for example, for children, when they have big tonsils or enlarged adenoids, they need to be removed. So that for children is very popular, for example. Mm -hmm. For adults, um, it's more about medication intake, uh, recreational drugs, caffeine, alcohol, that can alter your sleep cycle as well. Um, it could be genetics. It could be that you have a narrow airway. So it could be mm -hmm. an obstruction with your sleep so you cannot breathe well, um, gender depending you know age when you get older you know more fatty tissues will deposit here so it will make your neck be like more air narrow and all that so but pretty much everybody can have Everyone. sleep apnea or a sleep disorder okay yes got it and if someone feels that they would benefit from a sleep study where can get, they go to learn more so they can go to centera.com. They can look for our Centera Marta Jefferson Sleep Medicine Center. We have sleep physicians that they can see, and we have the sleep center where we perform the sleep studies. It's as easy as talking to your primary care doctor about it. If you are experiencing any of those symptoms, you can just talk about this, and we will take referrals, we'll do the sleep studies, and we'll pair you up with a, a sleep physician to get treated. Very nice. Some great information there. Thank you so much, Juliana, for coming in today. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're very welcome.